Yo, welcome guys. So you have made it to the fifth video of the series. The last days I already did upload skill specialization showcases for the crossbow, the dagger, the greatsword and the staff. And today we're going to take an exclusive look at the bow. We are going to start with the Zephyr Snog and that skill is having like a decent base damage and it consumes all the target stacks that you're able to apply and each stack is increasing the, the damage by 5%. Um, target stacks are basically the debuff that the bow is applying with numerous other skills. You also have the option to turn it into a gale that is dealing an AOE damage like we have seen on the crossbow for example. You also have the option to do a collision but this is only working if you are standing in the whirlpool and the whirlpool is an area of effect that both are able to apply with numerous skills you're gonna see it you're also able to get the cooldown reduced for every stack of target that you are able to consume so let me show you the skill in game right here i am not standing at max rate with the bow otherwise it would everything would look too small so this is the shot i will apply a whirlpool quickly so you see what it looks like when you're using it out of a whirlpool. You saw the immune right here. Sorry to interrupt, but short self-promotion is needed. Currently, 91.2% of the people watching the videos are not subscribed to the channel. So let's make a deal. If you learn something new in this video, you have to subscribe. Next up, you're having the decisive sniping. The skill has a really good base damage with a difference between 500 up to 800. If you're hitting, you will also increase based on luck, the critical rate from 200 to 400. You can increase the max collecting time by 1% and this will also increase the damage. You can make it so it does more damage against CC units. You can make it so it's reaching collection status faster while you're in a whirlpool condition. Then you can make it so that you're able to move while charging, extremely valuable in PvP. And you can change it in a bombardment. Let me show you the first four. So this is what it looks like normally. You will see that little skill cast here. This is what it looks like when you're casting it out of a whirlpool. This is what it looks like when you're using it as decisive bombing. Now let's go over nature's blessing. This is a heal for all the party members around you and it also increases the mana region. This also removes one weakening effect when applied. So really good for example to counter like Queen Balandir's um, crossbow. Then you are having vitality where you can make it so you get more heal based on your base damage and then boosts it afterwards by a flat 50. You can decrease the cooldown. This is the numerous skill that I use to actually apply the whirlpool to have the additional effects on the other skills. It does not look that spectacular in game, the healing. You will see it here, there's the health region. But this is the whirlpool effect that you're going for. Next up, we are having the Armored Vortex. This is a skill that you shoot through a location and then after two seconds, it will actually pull the people into that location. You can make it so it's actually a tornado instead going in one direction or you can make it so it applies a whirlpool on the position. So let me show you the arrow vertex with the um, whirlpool. You see shot and whirlpool and this right here is the tornado. It's building up a little and then you shoot that tornado up front. Next up, we are having Deadly Marker. It has a 90% chance to hit. For every attack that you're dealing onto the target, the critical hit will increase by 100. And this is not only for you, this is also for your party members. And every critical hit they are landing will reduce the skill cooldown by 1%. In PvE, this is reduced to only having 50% effectiveness. Like even with this reduce, this is a must have in every dungeon kit. Whenever you're seeing a bow user in a dungeon group that is not running Deadly Mark for your whole team, then it's a pleb. It's simple to say. We're also going for the first one where we are seeing that we are having the option to apply target, our debuff, and we are having the ability to increase the hit. So if people are stacking lots of evasions, you will go into this direction. This is what it looks like in game. You shoot it like a little range and you have that arrow here as a signal so other people also know that target where they get a benefit if attacking next up we are having the flash arrow this one is a attack with four meters around you 
and it's really valuable to protect your backline against assassins. Let's say here that would be uh, my mate. This is the front line of the enemy and I see an assassin in the backline going invisible about to engage. Then I can use my flash arrow here. And in this area, the assassin would not only get uncovered, he would also get stunned for two seconds. The only stealth where this is not working is the stealth that you are able to use if you are rank one. Then you can change that from an uncover to a healing wave. It's called flash wave. You can also make it to have more range. You can make it so it has a chance to apply a weakening with um, decreasing the accuracy by 300 for six seconds. The blind only makes sense if you're going flash wave. If you're using flash arrow, they are stunned anyways. So the blind, uh, so the blind is not that important. But if you're going for the flash wave, you do want to check the blind and you can increase the stun duration and you can increase the recovery duration if you're using flash wave. And now let me show you what the flash wave looks in game, looks like in game. Boom, and everyone here uh, would also be healed if it's your allies. Next up, we are having the ensnaring arrow. And as the name already says, it does make a um, bind onto the enemies. But similar to something that we had on Crate Sword, where instead of a stun, we are able to shock the enemy. Here, instead of a bind, we are able to oppress the enemy if they are immune to the bind. So they cannot just outplay you with picking immunity. You do have the option to get 35% of your cooldown back if you are attacking the enemy that you're killing from at least 10 meters away. You have the option that um, it consumes one of the target stacks and therefore increasing the bind or the oppress duration. And you can make it similar to what we had with Deadly Mark. You can increase the hit rate in case enemies are building lots of evasion. And this is what it looks like in-game. It's one shot, you see the bind here. Next up, we are having Strafing. This is an attack where you attack four consecutive times. The skill can be used an additional time within three seconds. This is your main applier for a target. You can also turn it into AOE by applying Gale, or you can make it so you're having a gap close to an enemy, and you can also do it so you can cast it multiple times. So let me show you what that looks like in-game. Gap close, shoot, 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 shoot multiple times, and you're seeing we have, with this version, we have instantly applied the max stacks of target. Now let's go to Brutal Arrow. That's a single arrow that will come down from the sky like an AOE attack and it will deal quite some damage with about 480 base and you have the option to turn the area where it's landing into a gale area stacking the gale applying more AOE over time and you have the option to cast it from a higher range let me show you what it looks like and now you're seeing the gale area is popping and it's still stacking the gale. If you are able to get one more stack going, this will only get it to nine. You are then able to have the AOE proc. Now let's go over the healing touch. This continually heals based on the base damage of um, yourself. It's more like a buff that you're giving to people and it can stack up to three times. You can make it so the flash wave that you can choose down here, right there, is also applying a healing touch stack. So if you are using flash wave, you definitely want to pick that up. That synergizes really well. Then you also have the option to have the recovery of the health still maintaining at a lower rate after the effect ends. And you can reduce the costs in case you have mana problems. It does look quite unspectacular in game, but it's a heal what you're expecting and you will see the buff here on the bottom. Then we are having the purifying touch. This is what it says, it's the ability to remove ACC effect. Important to note here is that it has a certain order in which it removes CC. And the first one it removes is actually a hard CC. The second one is like something like a soft CC, like a bind or like a slow. The third one, it would be like a weakening, like for example, um, like the poison from a Queen Balandir crossbow. Another side effect is it also increases the attack speed of the person used on by 13%. There is a, an ability to have an additional one removed at a 50% chance. You can reduce the cooldown of the whole skill by 30% and you're applying another stack of healing touch. So with flash wave, healing touch and purifying, you can instantly get to the max stacks of healing touch. Let me show you in game also pretty unspectacular now let's go over the last skill 
and this is actually the best skill the bow has. The reason why is because this allows for really unique CC chains, healing abilities or whatever. Blitz will allow you to reset the cooldown of the skill that you just used last back to zero. The only thing that's important to note here, that skill cannot be reduced by cooldown reduction or anything that has a fixed duration. The only way you can reduce it is actually by specking the cooldown here. Another thing is the limit break. So once you are using that one, the next skill will not also have the cooldown reduced. It will also have an enhanced effect. So if we're using it decisive sniping, we will have 150% of base damage and 450% damage per second, giving us a really big damage. We can also make it with flash wave to increase the healing. We can use it with healing touch to increase the base healing and the remaining cooldown time will be decreased by 10 seconds or we can use it by purifying tact and that will also decrease the cooldown by 10 seconds. So let me show you what that looks like on the example of the deciphering shot. So now I am casting the decisive shot. Now I will reset the cooldown and I will be able to instantly cast it again with the enhanced. Yeah guys, this is it about the bow and overall I gotta say they introduced the bow as a really good CC, heal, safety, support weapon. And this is what they said in the interview and they actually stick to their word. And now we are at the end of the video. If you liked it, don't forget to actually press the like button. If you subscribe, turn on the bell and share it with your friends. And if there's still any questions open, just comment down below. I will answer everything in less than 24 hours. Cheers guys.